Hi, this is Ruben Lara, and today we're gonna to talk about some serious shortcut and layout enhancements that I guarantee will speed up your workflow. Now, ultimately, you wanna get the tools out of the way, so to speak, so you can just concentrate on making good painting and color picking decisions, not hunting for stuff in the menu system. If the workspace I have here seems a little foreign to you, make sure to check out my free lesson on setting up your workspace so you can see how I got to this point. Now, the basic idea of that lesson is to make your most used tools accessible right here in the quick access panel, and then to dock your most used palettes in places that are helpful for you. The two main things we'll go over now are the edge keyboard and the command bar, which is right here at the top. Now, if you're wondering how in the world to display the edge keyboard, it's not super obvious at the beginning. So I'm just gonna go ahead and hide it here. And as you can see, by swiping in from either edge, we reveal two states of this edge keyboard. The first one is floating, which obviously floats over any, any existing palettes in your canvas. And if you swipe again, it docks it right into that edge. Now you can hide it supposedly by grabbing it and trying to move it over. I find that to be a little tricky. So if you bring it out, uh, dock it, the best way I find of hiding it is just to swipe in from the opposite edge. Now you'll probably want to favor the thumb of your free hand to use the edge keyboard. And I, that's where I find it to be the most helpful. So we'll just go ahead and swipe in from the right there. And if we swipe in one more time, it'll dock it. Again, hiding and opening. Now you'll notice if I uh, kind of long swipe, it'll dock it right in. Let me try that again. It'll dock it right in uh, without having to do it twice. Now the edge keyboard is helpful for modifier keys that aren't actions per se but that modify an existing tool. So for example, let's go ahead and create a new layer. I'm on my rough pencil and I can make a few marks there. Now let's say we wanted to do a completely straight line from point to point. Now if we were using our desktop app and our keyboard, we would just use the shift key and create those straight lines between points. Well now we can with the edge keyboard. So if I go ahead and hold down shift, you can see that now I'm able to create those point to point straight lines. The same thing is true with things like the control modifier key. So for example, uh, if I have uh, multiple layers and um, let's see, we'll just put some marks there like this. These are all in separate layers. And I wanted to throw all of these into a group. Well, I could either shift click these different layers or go ahead and just grab the check mark and then hit control, which would be the same thing as right clicking and say create folder and insert layer. And now all those are inside of a group. But one of the most helpful uh, modifier keys I find is the option key. Now in our previous demo, we uh, kind of set up our quick access toolbar and our finger gestures to uh, invoke the eyedropper tool with our finger as we swiped over. But using the option key is much quicker, it's a lot more responsive, and won't interrupt all of the strokes you're making while you're painting. So let's say I'm right here on the oil paint flat brush and we're making some marks. Now all we have to do is hit the option key that invokes our color picker and we can just go ahead and keep on painting. It's very quick and a much better way to uh, pick up, you know, and color pick a local color. The next shortcut you'll probably want to set is uh, allowing the command uh, modifier key to change your brush size. Now again, in the last video tutorial about setting up a workspace, we set our brush size palette here to the middle which can be helpful to jump always right to a specific size. But I find when I'm painting on my desktop app, I am using the option and command modifiers to resize my brush on the fly. So once again, I'll go ahead and pick a kind of a dark color here so we can see what we're doing. Oh, I'll come up here to something a little bit larger. There we go. And if I hit command and option together and click and drag on the canvas, you can see that by going left and right, we're immediately changing our brush size. Command option and changing small. Now, obviously, you can see there that uh, it gets a little tricky because the option key is the color picker, and then command option together is changing the brush size. That can get a little tricky to hit it every single time. So let's just change it so that just the command button is the thing that changes your brush size. In fact, I've already done it here, and you can see it in action. So I'm changing that, going smaller and going larger. Option for color picking, command for changing brush size. Just using those two functions on the edge keyboard will greatly speed up your painting and drawing process. So how did I change the command modifier to invoke the brush size setting? 
Well, if we come up here to the Clip Studio Paint menu and go to the Modifier key settings, we'll remember that there is a radio button for common settings and for settings for each process of tool. Now, I find that no matter what the uh, brush or pencil or you know chalk tool that I'm on, I'd like for the common setting uh, command bar to be set to change brush size. So I'm going to click command settings here and we'll just filter down to the command bar. And by default, I believe it's set to change tool temporarily and it's set like to the object tool or the move tool, which if you haven't adjusted this yet, it's likely what it will be set to. But you'll see here that in this drop down menu, uh, the change brush size option is immediately there. So by changing the common settings, command change brush size and hitting OK, then most of your tools will now reflect that. You may have to go in if Clip Studio Paint has already set certain tools to have an alternate function for the command modifier button, but just changing the common settings for that should hit most of them. All right, we also have a space bar, which moves your canvas around. It's basically the same thing as you know using your two finger uh, gesture there to zoom in and, and pan your canvas around. And you also have a series of extra touch buttons. Now I'm on the small nine inch iPad, so I only have space for six but uh, I believe on the bigger iPad Pros, uh, you can get up to 12 or 16 touch functions, which is fantastic. Well, what can we use these kinds of things for? Again, totally up to you, but here's a couple of things I've done on mine. For example, I'm often blending when I'm oil painting. So I'm gonna set these up uh, to some functions I find myself using often. And of course, uh, you just need to figure out how you're working and set that accordingly. The first thing I often use is the blender brush. Now, I, I have the soothing watercolor blender here, right, which we had uh, set that previously. But to use it, I, I basically have to change tools every time. So I'm on my oil paint flat brush, uh, let me just get a little bit darker there. And then, um, let's see, let's get a contrasty color there. Then I have to move over to my soothing watercolor, blend, come back to my oil paint flat brush. If I was on my desktop setup, I would just hit the J button on my keyboard, press that down temporarily, and it would temporarily change to whatever I wanted it to, and then go back to the uh, the tool that I was currently on. Again, I don't have my whole keyboard with me, but I do have access to at least six keys that I can set. So let's go ahead and set that. I'm gonna come here to shortcut settings. I'll make sure that I'm, I'm on my tool setting area. We'll come to my blender setup, open that up. And I'll just say soothing watercolor, edit shortcut and hit T1. Okay. So now if I'm on my oil paint flat brush or really any of the tools, I can start painting, hit T1, and you can see it temporarily changes to soothing watercolor, but it goes immediately back to my brush when I let it go. So I could be blending, painting, color picking, changing my size, blending again, you know, continue painting and just continue blending. Just a real quick way to get that nice painterly look as you're painting. Another thing I'm often doing is resetting my view, which is essentially, you know, fitting to fitting to screen. And Clip Studio has set that up already in the set one quick access tool, reset display. But if I'm in my painting uh, quick access tab, uh, going back to set one each time isn't super practical. So I'm gonna set my bottom right corner because it's something I can easily remember to that. So we'll go to shortcut settings. In this case, we're gonna go to the main menu, which is where that's found, view, and we'll set reset display. Edit that shortcut and hit T6. And while we're here, let's just go here to rotate invert and I'll reset the rotate and set that to T5. Great, so now T6 fits me to screen and if I'm you know, in here painting and I rotated this image but I don't wanna fit all the way to screen, I can hit T5 and it'll just reset that rotation can be in my same general area. Another thing I'm often doing is duplicating layers. In Photoshop, the uh, shortcut is Command-J. I've set that on my Clip Studio desktop app to Command-J as well, just because I'm working between Photoshop and Clip Studio all the time. Um, but let's set that here as well. So we'll come here to Shortcut Settings and uh, Main Menu again. This time we'll go to the layer. And now we're finding there it is, duplicate layer, edit shortcut, and I'm gonna set that to T4. Great, and now when I hit T4, it duplicates that layer for us. Perfect, and of course that applies to folders as well. And get creative with what you do with these function keys. Again, this not only applies to the iPad build, 
but it also applies to the desktop app as well. For example, um, I'll just reset my view here, and I often have source that I'm looking at while I'm painting. And of course, when I'm painting on my iPad out of the office, I will likely not have access to a second screen for my source. So I've thrown all of my source material that I want to see into this layer called source, and you can see that I can turn it on and off and obviously use it as, a, as, as reference there. But going back to the layers palette each time can be tedious, especially if I'm just painting on a single layer and I've hidden my layer source and I don't want to you know, be opening up my layers palette every single time. Well, what I've done is I've set an action to hide and show any layer called source. I've recorded that and uh, we won't go through all the details here, but if you know how to record an action, well, let's just go ahead and do that actually. Um, the source is on, so let's just reset this source off. All right, so if uh, the source is off and I go ahead and play source on, you can see that it just goes and looks for any layer, whether it's a single layer or a folder called source and turns it on. So we'll just set the, uh, the corresponding off state. So we'll say new and we'll call this source off. Again, the name doesn't really matter. We'll hit record. And I wanna make sure I'm not on the layer called source uh, so that it can go and just find whatever layer is called source and act on it. So I'm on just any other layer here. Uh, and in fact, every time I make a change, you can see that it's recording what I'm doing. So I'm gonna turn uh, the layer called source off and stop that. And in fact, I don't want to change the layer I'm on. I'll just delete that right now. Good. So what this action does is it goes and finds the layer called source, again, whether it's a single layer or a folder, and turns it off. So if I run source on, it turns it on. And if I run source off, it turns it off. Well, great. Now what we can do is assign our remaining two touch buttons to each one of these actions. So I'll just close the auto action palette. I don't need to see that anymore. And let's come up here to the shortcut settings. And instead of being on the main menu, we're gonna be acting on the auto action set. We'll open this up. And you can see that the two actions I've created, source on and source off, are there. So we'll touch that, edit shortcut, and we'll set show source to T2. And we'll come here and set hide source to T3. Perfect. So uh, now I can be on this painting layer, let's say. I'm on my old paint flat brush. I've you know changed to just the right size. And now by hitting T2 and T3, anything that shows up in that source layer is, uh, is gonna hide and show. So it is layer name based. So I just make it a habit in my own personal workflow to create a source folder and then just throw any source layers I want into there. And of course, as I you know, paint, I can you know, hide and show what source is showing at the moment. And uh, it's always acting on that one sources folder. So you can see how this edge keyboard can be really powerful. You can get real creative with it and just assign it to anything you want according to your workflow. And if you save this workspace, it will also save any shortcuts you've assigned to this edge keyboard. So let's say I have certain actions that I usually use when I'm painting. I can set those touch fu functions to that. But if I have another set for animating or another set for sketching and I save workspaces for all of those, all of these touch function assignments will follow suit. Great, let's talk about the command bar now, a ver another very powerful aspect of the Clip Studio layout. The command bar is great for running frequently used commands or accessing less frequently used panels. And both are set in the command bar settings. Now, Clip Studio has already put some there for us and they can serve it as an example, so I'll just hide my source there. They put in here clear, which can clear an entire layer. That's the same action as going to edit clear, right? So you can see that any of the menu items can be put up there. Fill is another one. So if I click that, it'll just fill my entire layer or it'll fill a selection. So determine which ones that are already there are ones that you, you know, use or need, and we can get rid of the ones that we don't need at all. So let's come up here to command bar settings. And the way this works is you find the command you wanna add, click add, it'll add it to the end of this command bar. We can also select the ones we don't use all the time and delete them. So for example, this one, which is clear inverse, I don't use all the time. And also it shows up in my lasso selection launcher. So I'll just delete that. I do use fill. Uh, I like to keep the transform there. I don't find that I'm using these all the time. Maybe deselect I'll leave there. Um, Invert selected, I guess is one I like to use as well. Although this one does come up on the selection launcher, launcher so I'm gonna just delete that. 
and I don't need the selection launcher settings, so I'll delete that as well. All right, let's talk about something I do often, which is to group multiple uh, layers into a folder. Now on my desktop app, I've set that to Command G, just like in Photoshop, I'll group several layers into a, a layer folder. So let's do that here. So we'll come to Layer, and we'll find Create Folder and Insert Layer, and we'll say Add. You see that it adds that icon to the end of the stack, and I'm just gonna grab this, I'm gonna put it right up here. Good, so we'll close that. So how does that help us? Well, uh, let's say we have you know these three layers, and we wanna call it, you know this is our paint group. So now all I have to do is select them and click that, and immediately it puts into a folder for us. Again, not something I use so frequently that I wanna put it into my edge keyboard, but I use it frequently enough that it's helpful just to have that button there. I'll undo that. Other commands I use often is I'm adding adjustment layers. So let's say I want to tone or tint you know, this, this uh, secondary paint layer. I'm going in here, I'm saying new correction layer, and I'm adding a, you know, a tone curve and you know, toning things that way. So that's a lot of clicks for me. So um, let's just delete that. But let's add them to our command bar here. So we'll say command bar settings. We'll come up to the layer menu and new correction layer. And I like to add uh, curves, color balance, hue saturation, and levels. You might be wondering, where are they? Well, because there's too many for the screen to fit here, it's actually added into this little drop down. So let's just see if we can close our layers palette there, and we can just move these over here. Oops, I actually threw that one into the clear, so I'll just do that. Um, and you can see that you can stack these as well. So if I really wanted to, I could actually throw all of these into you know, an adjustment layer group, right? And just kind of click that and, and uh, select which one I wanted. It kind of defeats the purpose for me because I like the one click, you know, immediate addition of that layer. There we go. Great. So now I could be in my layers palette and immediately I can just come in here and say, okay, I want to quit curves and I'll just you know, click that down. I also want a hue saturation adjustment layer, you know, to maybe move that over to a, you know, to a greener hue. Just makes it real quick for on the go uh, color correcting. The second thing we can use our command bar for is for pop-up palettes. Now those are different from actions that we might find in the menu system, but it could be helpful to have a little icon here that pops up, for example, our tool property palette. Now we can find our tool property palette in here, which we had originally hidden, and it shows up there. But again, you know, maybe it's a little intrusive for that to be coming out every time, so I like to just keep that closed most of the time. But let's add it here for this, the few times where I wanna go in and maybe adjust the opacity of something. So we'll come back here to Command Bar Settings, and instead of Main Menu, we'll go to Pop-Up Palette. And this is gonna show us all the things that it's possible to pop up in this Command Bar. And we'll go here to Tool Property, and we'll say add. Again, that added it to the end. I'm just gonna put it right up here up to the beginning and hit close. Great, so now on any brush that I'm on, I can very quickly pop up here. It gives me you know, the more exhaustive list of things I can do and I can even come in here and you know, make some subtool detail adjustments there. Lastly, I don't find that when I'm painting, I need my brush size palette anymore so I can just uh, hide that. Now I have more space for my quick access settings and I'm ready to really just speed through this painting in a way I couldn't before. Again, the goal is to get the tools out of the way so you can just concentrate on making good painting and color picking decisions, not hunting for stuff in the menu system. All right, I hope that was helpful. Don't forget to save your work and have fun.